Hello, marketers. Welcome once again to Hashtag Marketers Lead Talk, where we bring industry intellects for you to gain real insights with professional learning. Today, Naveen Chaudhary, Associate Marketing Director, Global Academic Business at Oxford University Press is with us. An astute marketing professional with around two decades of experience in media, book publishing, retail, and ad tech industry. He has worked with Aditya Billa Group, Derek Bhaskar Group, Educom in his previous assignments. Currently, he is managing global team based in US, UK, and India. And he is also an author and screenplay writer. Welcome, Naveenji, to Hashtag Marketers Lead Talk. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you, Sachin. It's a How pleasure to be here and talk about uh, the industry. It's pleasure is absolutely ours, sir, where a stalwart like you has taken a time for the community and uh, uh, giving your wisdom of knowledge for the benefit of all of us. So once again, thank you so much. Great. So let's begin the discussion around uh, the challenges, uh, the, the topic that we have taken, the changing trends in, in publishing industry. So what's been the impact of COVID uh, uh, in publishing industry? COVID was uh, quite uh, interesting and different kind of uh, impact it has given to publishing. So when we talk about publishing, this industry is, uh, so we have trade publishing, we have textbook publishing, then we have reference publishing. So when I work, what I work is academic and it is primary reference publishing, whereas I'm in somewhere in touch with trade publishing also. So, so different kind of aspect and different kind of impact happened in different kind of publishing. So the very first thing was when March 2020 lockdown was everywhere in the world. So the sales everywhere got hit. There was no supply of books. Everything was down. So initially we were trying to understand what is really going to happen. And that was the time when every publisher tried to push their eBooks. And that is the first thing which really worked for everyone. However, it is not the way it should have been done, but it has done. So if I talk uh, primarily uh, about academic publishing, the area where I work. So library is one of the big uh, customer for us. Our books primarily go to the university libraries. It is used by researchers, professors, students. <clears throat> so the way users were interacting with the library, that is something which you have seen. It has changed worldwide, not just in India, US and UK markets where also I work uh, for academic books. So there are students used to go to library. They, normally take books, but that has been changed. The e, we provide a lot of e-publishing, e-services. E e-books are there, then we have online platforms for accessing the books. So that digital platform started getting more traction as compared to before. So even in the library, the digital pro pro uh, products which we have given, the demand of those products increased. So one of the thing which as a marketer, I always struggled was to increase the uses of my online products in the libraries. Because the library is buying an online product for us. It is not just talking about eBooks. So online platform, which have each and every book which we publish available to students to access, that becomes costly, but that is cheap if everyone uses it. So users need to be increased so that you can get it renewed next year. So this year, earlier, I used to run a lot of campaigns for that so that users get increased. But during this period, automatically that digital uses increased. And that is something which we have seen a lot of chapters, new chapters people are uh, using. So that is something which started changing. People are reading more. Uh, there is one more thing which I realized for the digital products was that uh, if it is accessible more on the laptop, they are able to read. So because everybody is not having device or not having a tab or Kindle device. So everyone is not comfortable with, if it is just limited to a particular kind of device. So if it is accessible on the laptop, we got good response. So this was on the digital front, which happened, but in books front book demand, because initially books were not supplied by any distributor. So that impacted. Second was uh, when it started, even then, um, but what we noticed that book is not something which is a primary requirement. So people who are having higher income, they are ordering it, but the way it was ordered by uh, students also, that has decreased. So in terms of books, that was one impact. Another major impact uh, which uh, happened that was on the distributors. So 
almost a lot of distributors, they had to shut down their business during this period, or, or they managed, had so much losses that they reduced the number of staff. So that is something which I think is going to be a long-term impact where distributors have impacted so much because they are not able to supply. Even they are getting a lot of business from schools or colleges or libraries. So even for them, still, it is somewhere a struggle. So that is something which I have seen uh, impact. So if I will talk about uh, academic industry, it is not that bad. Our digital uh, products, we got growth in double digits. However, the growth which we got there, that was pulled down by the print. So somewhere it is very much even. But if you talk about the trade publishing, so in trade publishing, uh, they got major impact because for them, book supply was not there. And as I said, this is not the primary requirement. So fiction books, which are selling in the market. So that is something which has gone down. However, now the demand of books has been increased again. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the distributor point that you mentioned, uh, no, this, this could be seen overall. And uh, no, we have a lot of my friends also work in, in publishing industry and uh, there was an impact. Absolutely. Great. I agree. So what changing new trends that you see now onwards, once we see that uh, no, things are coming online, schools are also mm -hmm. adopting this way. So what is your <laughs> take? Uh, what trends we see uh, uh, for the publishing industry in the future? See, one of the things which I already talked about, so digital products, we have seen a lot of growth about it. Uh, so every uh, analyst or media, they are talking about that digital is going to grow again. And somewhere I also had that kind of feeling, but uh, you cannot be sure at this moment. Because when uh, we talk about after September, when market started getting open, so again, demand of print book increased. A survey was done by our organization also, some other organizations also. So if you mix and see all kind of reports, still there, so there are 37% of people who want to buy now a digital product, so are more likely to buy a digital product. But still there are 63% people who are not likely to buy digital product. So that is something how this is going to work out in coming one year that we have to see. But one thing is for sure, digital is going to grow. One of the interesting area which happened, so audiobooks. So audiobooks is something which started uh, some time back. It is picking the market, but this is the time when audiobooks actually uh, captured a big market. Storytel, Audible, if you go with them, they have seen a lot of growth. The books are now heard more. So, so that is also something which is happening. So we have to see how this audiobook market is really going on. In academic audiobooks, uh, so it is more into trade and non-fiction trade and fiction, non-fiction kind of thing. Uh, but the academic one, where right now, I don't see that much of audiobooks, but that is something which the publishers started thinking about. So that is also something which is going to happen. In terms of uh, education division, so you and I both worked in K-12. I'm not directly working with K-12, but that is something which I see in my house. So when you and I were working, we were giving supplementary digital product in addition to the books. So what you're reading in the books, you are able to see it in 3D or in, in video format, and it is supplementing your education. During this lockdown, when um, other many organizations, they came up with their own online course program. So that is somewhere, so not so additional to the, or supplementary, that is somewhere getting, going to be a substitute of the books. So that is also something which is good. We have to see what is really happening and how these digital companies are going to disrupt the things. So these digital companies are also trying to tap same school. They have same kind of market. So that is also something which I want to see what is really going to happen. Other thing is, uh, so this is something which is going to, like when we're talking about print versus digital. So this is something which is also a point. When we see the demand of digital products, eBooks or online platform, that has been increased in the students or people who are into very early stage of their career. So quite youngsters. So youngsters are using this product more, but anybody beyond 35, 40, they are still not that kind of comfortable. So what I see as a consumer behavior for you, me, and our people around us, even 10, 15 years younger than us, they have studied through the books. So we are still somewhere comfortable with the books. We are reading it through the book. So that's why the demand is somewhere going back to 
uh, print books. But this generation, they are comfortable with mobile, they are comfortable with tabs. And now they are also studying on their computer screen. They are reading everything digital. So they are getting more comfortable with the uh, digital screen and digital reading. So this is also something which in next coming years, few years, we will see that when this segment is going into the college or they are able to buy themselves, are they going to buy print books or they are going to buy digital books? So somewhere at this that shift is going towards the digital one. So this is what I see. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the trade friends, when I talked, uh, they mentioned that demand of nonfiction has been increased in this period. So it was also, earlier also it was somewhere on wellness these are the books which were in demand but this demand increased many folds during this period and i think the pandemic the way it has impacted that is also something which is doing things cookbooks were somewhere down so everybody was watching uh, recipe on youtube so but cookbooks are coming back into the demand so that is also something happening so the way market has changed the way we are uh, looking at things everything is somewhere changing so at this moment these are the trends digital Movement towards digital is the biggest thing we, which we see, but I still want to wait for one to two years to see what really is going to happen and what is the direction exactly this market is going on. Despite saying that, I think every organization is pretty much ready with the technology because we don't know how in a moment everything is going to change. Right. That's right. Uh, COVID has you know, taught a lot of lessons, including YouTube and including yeah. uh, going going <laughs> digital uh, so uh, absolutely superb superb so marketing uh, uh, no as we are a marketing community you are uh, you know heading marketing uh, publishing for marketing is little complicated so and mm -hmm. too many publications quite un unorganized at times so how to ensure a regular business you no know, as a brand so if uh... So again, the answer is going to be different from uh, trade publishing to academic publishing. So for everything, content, the key thing is content, how we are going to, what we are giving to the customer. That is something which is very much going to work. This market is also very price sensitive. So you also need to focus that with this price sensitive market and low margin market. We don't have uh, leverage to use TVC. We cannot do a lot of heavy print advertisement kind of things. So the focus and publishing industry is primarily on PR, on the media and digital marketing. So this is where we focus more. So social media, Google advertising, then uh, news articles, these are the things which primarily work better for us. Apart from that, the collaboration is something which is really helping because what we are doing is we are selling content. We are selling something which is at least covering any aspect. So be it, if you are a trade publisher or you are an academic publisher, you have something which is actually targeting a big group of customers. So what I have done, you know, when I was working with, I'm working with OEP. So when I was taking care of India market, I did a lot of uh, tie-ups with embassies because we had books for different markets. We're talking about different markets. We have researchers who are researching about that market. So that I did. I did a tie-up with many think tanks who are working on policies. We are working on different subject areas. So these are the things you have to actually work out and reach out to the customers. So this is not like FMCG where just one day you have run a scheme and then a lot of people are going to the shop and then they are ordering things. So the slow sales is slow. We have to understand that it is not going to be, there are very few cases when overnight someone become a bestseller or sell it. So it is something a time taking thing. It is content in India. For us, the publishing books are only for textbooks. So we don't have a culture of making our children read anything beyond academics. So that is also a culture which is changing. So you need to work in a different way. But if I talk about the tool, digital and uh, PR, these are the strongest marketing tools for us. True that. Uh, and um, I appreciate you agree <coughs> with your point uh, that uh, apart from books, uh, reading habits in the kids uh, and in the into the school education system, this is somehow missing mm -hmm. and it needs to be improved upon. If we and, and this is right. a you no know, very long impact also, you no know, in terms of your mm -hmm. employability, your critical thinking, and lot many other positive aspects of that. So uh, let, let's hope uh, what uh, new education policy brings up to this. So, uh, yeah, so if, if, if we will make a culture of reading, that will also help me in getting better appraisal. So, so you are doing <laughs> some Janseva also. True that. 
through that obvious yeah. obvious and the end of the day it's just about business and uh, business with good values so th- this is one of True. the uh, prime example that you gave uh, amazing so um, you are a marketer boss top five things that you would recommend you know, for our audience to do every day you now to be a successful marketer like you so every day um, there are many things which you have to do but everyone have different way of looking at things uh, one thing which i have uh, from the day one of my career what i focused is i am more of a customer advocate not of a company advocate so this sounds really weird you are getting salary from a company you are working for them you are selling their product your job is to get profit for them but why i am customer advocate because that profit that revenue is going to come from the customer so what i believe is if you want to make your customer more loyal so you have to think from that perspective i never tried to market my product from company's perspective because company is having a different kind of thinking we are thinking profit we are thinking top line bottom line but is it actually going to be useful for uh, the customer so whenever we are in the product development stage that is the time when i think from the customer's perspective i talk to my product team accordingly if it is about the marketing and communication i want to see that if that communication as a consumer is it really working for me is am i attracted towards that is it looking like like i'm trying to sell someone a product or i'm trying to solve a problem so this is how i see so i think from the customer perspective i feel like if this is not going to help the customer then my advertising may ensure the sales for some time but it is not going to go for the longer so think from the customer perspective that is going to initially it will be t- taking time but then your efforts will be less because customers are going to be your advocate so this is what i think uh, other thing is about the ideas uh, so you need to listen normally what happens when we have done mba we are into marketing and within a time of experience what we started feeling like now i know the things mujhe sab pata hai to tum mujhe kuch mat batao that is what actually happens with us but i have felt that a lot of things you in a marketing it is not just about the marketing tools it is not just just about marketing communication it is everything is about the idea and this idea can come from anywhere anyone can give you idea so that is something which i am always open to listen to things if anyone is coming up the idea then you uh, other thing in addition to that is being aware so wherever we are this is something where you al- always need to keep an eye this is just like a, p- a policeman so even a, a police man he is on his way home from duty he will always keep an eye around what is really happening so if he is noticing anything he will report that so that is the job of marketer also i feel we are always on duty if i am in the market i am looking at a holding that is not just a holding for me that is something a communication for me what is really happening in the market so so this point leads to the other thing what is happening in the market so i am not just focus you need to be updated remain updated what is happening in, in your industry but i also think i need to be remain updated about what is happening in other industry industries which are aligned to my industry and industries which are entirely different to my industry because you have no idea what kind of change can happen when and how things are going to change for example uh, when amazon was not delivering but swiggy was delivering zomato was delivering everywhere can't they supply a book as well if they are picking up from the restaurant why they can't pick up a book and supply to you so that is for them it is going to be a revenue idea for me a distribution channel is solved so you don't know something which is not really connected to me to my industry that can be useful so we have to remain in this updated keep focus on cross industry things also and the last and but most important thing is updating yourself our skill set because market is changing every day so i did my mba 17 years back so that was a time that was a different time mobile was in the market so in 2003 free incoming calls started before that it was paid incoming was also paid it was that um, we don't had that party keyboards aapko see the one a b c you have to press that one button three times from there we moved to smartphones we got so my first phone was 1.3 a uh, megapixel camera and it was wow my friends are wow bete this is what you got 1.3 megapixel and now we are talking about 48 megapixel in that phone <laughs> so this is how the entire market is changing when market is changing the cons- consumer is changing 
his behavior is changing. So how my similar old marketing strategy or marketing theory is going to work out. So whatever we study, we study. That is the base foundation that is there, but you need to change your buildings. Things you have to change your paint, you have to change design, that is everything you have to change. So that skill set is something which I think always need to work. I was a traditional marketer. I worked, so till the time we were working together, it was, uh, I was a traditional marketer. But after that, I suddenly realized digital is becoming big. 2009 was when Facebook was uh, started becoming popular in India. So nine, a lot of people were on Facebook. And by 11, it was a big advertising platform. So you have to create community there. So that is something which you need to understand. You have to experiment that. These days I'm hearing a lot about Clubhouse. So that is something which is, you cannot ignore. You don't know how that one audio chat platform can become a huge community building platform. So I started using that. And so you have to remain updated. Whatever you have studied, whatever you had done, that is going to change. In marketing, it cannot work in similar way. So yeah, so these are few things which I think every market here need to focus and work out. Superb. Superb. Uh, and uh, in a nutshell, uh, Naveen has uh, uh, clearly recommended stay updated, uh, <coughs> learn, unlearn, and relearn. Uh, I think uh, that that should be the fundamental. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So there is another side of uh, Naveen as well. Uh, you are an author. So how you got that inspiration, that too in Hindi novel structure, and you know, <laughs> the, the background of what you are currently working, your profession is something different. So how, how this happened, and what is the inspiration behind it? It just happened, I think. Uh, I didn't had, I will not say I had a writing flair, but I was very much into humor or satire. So I used to say it aloud to people. And when social media came, you have to write posts. So how much you have, you can write that. Went to PVR with my friends. Oh my God, enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So you start, need to do something else. So I started putting my satire and humor on social media. And that is the place, I think, I, I give credit to social media for that. That was time when blogging was also picking up in the market. So I realized why not to try and tell your story. So initially when I started my blog, it was primarily about marketing case studies, but I just wrote two, three marketing case studies and I realized what I'm giving additional, there are so many. So why not to do something different and why not to uh, use the opportunity to promote myself where there is not much crowd. So Hindi is something which is our language. We talk in Hindi, we dream in Hindi. It's a different story that uh, we are trying to talk in English or we have to give our presentations in English. But actually we, we think in our own language, be it Hindi or Kannada or Marathi, whatever it is. So Hindi was difficult because it is in school after 10th, you're not reading it. So we don't write Hindi much or there are not books available. With Amazon books started getting available to the market. Uh, Google Indic made typing Hindi easy. So you don't need to learn Hindi typing. That was one good thing which happened with Google Indic. So I started writing Hindi on Facebook and I found that it is getting more traction as compared to the what I'm writing in English. Because people are more able to connect. And, and there are a lot of words which connect with us, which you cannot explain in English or, or any other language. That is our culture. That is something which is with us. So that started happening. And then I started writing my blogs, which were in Hindi. Uh, mostly humor and something on politics, even that is that was humor. And slowly some news websites started asking me if I can write for them. So that also happened. So I wrote for some popular news websites. So that gave me a confidence and every marketer is a storyteller. So I think every marketer can write a book. If they think focused, they can write a book, be it fiction. So you wrote a nonfiction, you wrote about selling. So that story, which you have experienced you have to put that in words and the way we are communicating to the, our customer. So only difference between any other writer and a marketer is we also think about whom we are going to give this book, who is going to read my book. So we can actually work out accordingly. So I was very much sure my book is going to be so for youth and for youth, there are a lot of love stories. So I'm not going to write a love story. So I found that student politics is one area which so were picked somewhere in the uh, films, but that was primarily a love story. So it is not very much into uh, books. So that was one unexplored area, not discussed much. I thought, why not to pick this? Suspense is something which sells a lot. Being in the industry, I learned that in those two, three years. So I made it uh, kind of suspense and thriller. 
that politics book. So that work, and I think within 18 days, Danik Jagran and Nielsen, they announced uh, top 10 Hindi works for the quarter. So each quarter they announced. And when this book was released, only 18 days were left for the October, November, December quarter. And in January, when they announced, this book was in eighth number. And then it was there for some more quarters. So that's how this made. And uh, now an OTT platform acquired rights for it. So they are making web series on it. And uh, I'm writing screenplay for that also. Thank you. Yeah, so this, this just happened. And I think every market here, you have a lot of stories. We are, our job is to tell stories. So we can definitely write a story. So, so the three uh, learning outcomes that I can I can observe in in the just this conversation of this question, one uh, dreams are absolutely clear in Hindi. B, yeah. <laughs> uh, B the best part of of your learning is to explore your passion, where you are being able to connect more. And uh, C is of course uh, try the new horizons. I think that also gives a new horizon to your success also. Mm -hmm. So exactly. that's been amazing, uh, Navinji. So before we uh, uh, know, wrap up the show, would like to have your thoughts on the marketing soul, the community of passionate marketers, and you being our community this, mentor. Yeah, this is this is one of the fantastic initiative because for us, we always need platforms where we can come discuss and learn. And marketing soul is giving that place where you can come, you can listen to other marketers, you can talk to them. So that way, this is a platform which I'm looking for, and I'm very much excited to be part of it. And I want it to grow many folds on many more marketers from different industries, from different levels to come up and talk more. So it is, it should be. I, I'm always open, even an executive can teach me a lot of things. So when I was working with OUP, my subordinates actually they taught me a lot because everyone was uh, in their early 20s early 20s. So no one was beyond 30. So for me, it was entirely a generation gap. A lot of things I learned from them. They learned from my experience. I learned from their tech expertise. So this is how it is happening. So these kind of platforms actually connect with all of us. We are able to understand how, how the industry is going, how marketing is changing, how marketeers are changing. So I, I really uh, appreciate the platform and I want it to grow many words. Thank you so much, uh, Navinji, for your motivation to add to what you just mentioned about uh, taking knowledge from the youth and the, those who have just started and their learning experience. Uh, this series that the Marketers Lead Talk, where we talk with the industry intellects, originally is a rather series which is served to those growing professionals to take up the inputs from them. And uh, uh, thank you so much, Navinji, for being with us today on Marketers Lead Talk. It was amazing, amazing, amazing learning from the all the uh, conversations that truly comes from your heart and, of course, the wisdom of knowledge that you have shared from the, your experience you had. Thank you so much, Navinji. Thank you, Sachin, for having me here.